G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we are doing probably my final mock draft. I've been doing several, I did one very recently, and in that video I said I might do two before the actual draft. But I think unless something crazy happens, like we hear evidence of a, of a real big trade that's gonna shake things up, I probably won't do another one. So we'll leave it as is today, most likely, and I'm gonna go through my top 30 again. Now the last one I did didn't include trades, and I've got a couple of trades I wanna discuss in this video. So. Richmond and North Melbourne is one that I'm going to leave alone again. Uh, it might be a bit of a cop-out. I just struggle to see Richmond's motivations for getting it done uh, aligning with North Melbourne's desire to keep access to Alex Toro. And I think if North trade with Richmond, there's a distinct possibility someone like Melbourne sharks him. So North could trade with someone. It might have to be Adelaide, but even then, I just struggle to see how the Crows would get that done with a lot of their assets in like the future third round. I don't think they hold a future second. However, I will include a couple of trades of teams like Essendon and West Coast trading future first to get back into this year's draft. I think they present as two very obvious candidates. They're not the only ones, but I've managed to find scenarios where I think it could make sense. So those will feature in this video. Bear in mind, I know it's an interesting time to do two mock drafts back to back, but the reality is you only have to change one or two picks early in the draft, in my opinion, for it to have a cascading effect on the rest of the order and teams will be forced into different decisions. So you can think of this as a bit more creative than predictive. I'd like to think it's a little bit of both, but this is almost mapping out an alternate to the one that I did the other day. Um, and we'll go through it pick by pick up until pick 30. So we'll crack into it, starting with Richmond and ending the draft with the West Coast Eagles. Uh, before we get into it, I'd appreciate it if you considered subscribing to this channel, if you've gotten anything out of my draft coverage up until the day of the draft. Bearing in mind, we will be here you know, immediately after the draft as well. And on the day, I'll be doing live streams for both day one and day two of the actual draft. So I'd appreciate it if you help me hit my goal of 33,000 subscribers by draft day. All right, so I'm not going to lie. The top five hasn't changed. I'll just get my top five up here again. I still think Richmond take Lawler. There is some degree of doubt around that. Um, you know, sometimes there's a unanimous pick one like last year. Uh, but this year, I think there's still some contenders like Jagger Smith and Finn O'Sullivan, if you believe the media speculation. However, I think everything is pointing to Sam Lawler at this point in time. It is also who I would take as the highest upside prospect in this year's draft. North Melbourne still bid on Ashcroft. Again, not sure if like where exactly that bid will come. It's not really super material to this mock draft. Finn O'Sullivan to Carlton. I still hold space for the possibility that they take Sid Draper, which would also have an interesting flow and effect to the rest of the draft, but I think they'll go the local talent there, leaving Adelaide to take the uh, probably the best available player and his homegrown. So I think the top five, I don't see any real meaningful reason to change that at this point. However, from this point on, um, this is where I'm going to lose some of you because I've tried to be a little bit creative with it. Let's talk about Melbourne's pick six. Can't wait to get slaughtered for this, but I have a growing suspicion that the Ds might take Bo Allen with their first selection here. Now, there's a few reasons why. I mean, in recent times, it's come out that Richmond and St Kilda are looking at Bo Allen as a possible draftee. Now, to put a pin in that for a second, there is every possibility that this is a little bit of fake noise out there. You know, maybe St Kilda and Richmond are putting that out there to spook Melbourne into taking Bo Allen at pick six, maybe. But I'm going to take it on face value. I, I just think that Bo Allen is such a Melbourne pick high upside, athletic beast, midfield potential. They like drafting out of WA. And fifthly, they probably need to take him here to have access to him at all. So this is my big bolt that I'm gonna get slaughtered for, but I am gonna say that Melbourne, who in recent times do pick from a slightly different order than what we would probably perceive as consensus, in particular, they evidence that last year. I think they'll like the high upside type in, uh, in Bo Allen. And I've done a whole video on Melbourne's draft. And uh, yeah, I'm going to back this one in Bo Allen at pick six to the Melbourne Footy Club, which has an interesting flow and effect on the next few picks. So now we have the Richmond Footy Club taking up Jagger Smith here. Absolutely no doubt that they would take him if he's available here. And again, it is a bit of a long shot, it seems for him to be available here, considering I just discussed him as a potential pick one contender. But I think every team up until this point has reasons for overlooking Jagger. And I think for Melbourne in particular, they'll like their high upside type. Jagger Smith is a little more, you know, slightly lower ceiling, but much higher floor. And I think for a team like Richmond, sort of starting a midfield from scratch, just about, they'll happily pair him with Sam Lawler. So a little bit of luck on Richmond's part, but I think Melbourne prefer the taller athletic type. Now we have St Kilda here. Now previously, I'd pretty much been giving them Josh Smiley every time because Harvey Langford wasn't available. Now you could make the argument they take both, but I'm not convinced by that. I think to have two big bodied, not super athletic midfielders in the same midfield possibly opens up the midfield in the future for having some you know, leg speed issues. So if they just pick one, I think they'll go Harvey Langford. 
Sorry guys, just a quick intrusion to let you know that this video is brought to you in a paid partnership with BetterHelp and they're on a mission to make starting therapy easier. I think there are some misconceptions about the value of therapy and one of those is you need to have a clinical mental health issue like depression or anxiety before you can seek out therapy. I actually think taking the step of seeking therapy and seeking help is actually a sign of strength and self-awareness and helps prevent problems before they arise. And it does take a bit of courage to acknowledge when you need help and taking steps to improve your mental health. So rather than thinking of therapy as something you use when you've got a diagnosed problem. Think of therapy as a tool for personal growth. It helps you understand yourself, you can develop healthier habits. It also provides a safe space to talk. Not everyone in their life has someone that they can go to and express to them what's on their mind. Or perhaps there is someone to talk to, but you don't wanna deal with the fear of judgment or perhaps feeling like you're a burden to them. And there's also the fact that you'll actually be getting guided help from an expert, a mental health professional. So as I said, as the paid partner of this video, BetterHelp's mission is to help starting therapy for you easier. Start Starting the process with them is really easy. All you have to do is fill out a questionnaire and in most cases, you'll be matched with a therapist within a couple of days. If the therapist that you get doesn't feel like the right fit for you, you can easily switch to another one at no additional cost. They are very careful that the therapists that they get are well qualified and there's also a customer service team if you have any issues. So if you are someone who is struggling and thinks you could benefit from therapy, click the link in the description or go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy. You get 10% off your first month. By doing that, you would be supporting the channel, but you also get 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. Thanks guys, let's get back to the video. And then they pair him with Xavier Lindsay. And that breaks my heart a little bit as I have been pretty publicly saying I want him to get to West Coast. So it doesn't seem super likely now. And I think, honestly, on talent, he would be the guy I'd pick for St. Kilda. And I just don't see it as realistic that they go Langford and Smiley, which leaves him still unexpectedly available. Now, this is probably where I'll throw in a bid for Leonardo Lombard. Um, this is probably about right on range. It's a little bit later than I normally have it. But again, it's a little bit arbitrary trying to pick who's going to bid on him. So that's Melbourne bidding on him. Lombard gets the Gold Coast Suns and now Melbourne are back on the clock. And they're in a position to just take the best available midfielder of who's available. Now, Josh Smiley, does he suit them? Yes, I think so. I think, again, there's still some upside there as a big, powerful inside midfielder. And I think distinctly different enough from Allen, who's a lot more athletically capable, who can also play a second position, at least to start his career. I think Melbourne will like that. They'll like their powerful, dynamic players. And Josh Smiley is that. So they'll be happy to take him and pair him with Bo Allen, which leaves Richmond on the clock. So this is again where I'll throw in a bid for Isaac Kako again a little bit later. This is pick 12, Essendon match this bid. And uh, I think we'll see a little bit more from Essendon later in this video. So now we got the Tigers and uh, they've got two selections in a row here at 13 and 14. And, um, you know, I previously said, I don't think they'll take a tall in the first four picks. And then in my last mock draft, I had them taking Harry Armstrong. So for creative purposes, maybe let's just assume they don't take a tall key forward. I think it's every chance that happens anyway. So need to take some diversifying picks whilst also being right on talent uh, from Sam Lawler and Jagger Smith. So I've gone for a couple of players here that have midfield potential, but are also strong in other positions and stylistically different to the others. So Toby Trevalia here as a running defender and Taj Houghton. Now both could end up midfielders, but they both, even if they become midfielders, will be different to Jagger and Lawler. So I think it just makes sense on so many levels. Taj Houghton is a little bit of a reach, but I think on talent, he's not a reach. It just comes with some perceived risk around his ACL, but I think he's a great selection. I think he's gonna be a very good player. He's a very gifted forward midfielder and he might take a little while before he gets on the park at AFL level, but I think Richmond can afford to be patient here. West Coast on the clock here and uh, I'm probably just gonna take the same bloke I took in the last one. So I think West Coast will be holding out for one of Trevalia, Lindsay or Allen. That's my current guess. And it's seeming increasingly likely they're gonna to have to you know, get used to the idea none of them are gonna be available. So who are the other contenders for West Coast pick? Well, I did strongly consider Joe Berry uh, but I'm going to go with Ollie Hannaford here. The other one is possibly Cooper Hines. Those are probably the three I'd select for West Coast. There is some degree of personal preference. I just want us to pick Hannaford over a Berry, but I think Berry would make sense. They're both dynamic small forwards, but still quite different on the, at the same time. And I think Hannaford has some inside capability and a bit more of an aggressive player as well, which I like. So we'll go Hannaford here for the West Coast Eagles. It is distinctly possible that they trade down. In the first iteration I did of this, I had them trading with Sydney. Sydney taking Harry Armstrong. And then I decided it's just too shit for West Coast. So I think they'll take Hannaford here, leaving Port Adelaide to take Joe Berry. Now, Port Adelaide's pick is seriously tough. I've seen some mocks where I've had them taking Harry Armstrong. And I originally had that in my first version of this mock draft. But then I talked myself out of it. They've just traded in Jack Lacocious. 
Yes, there's some doubt around Todd Marshall, but they've got Oli Law, they've got Georgiatis, and I don't know if the need for Harry Armstrong is that strong. So I think we're seeing a little bit of a slide here for Harry Armstrong, um, still available, and Paul Adelaide take Joe Berry, who's a player that's been linked to them. Okay, they just traded in Joe Richards, but Berry's a little bit more distinctive from that as more of a high half forward. I am denied about this a lot, but let's say Joe Berry. I don't think Port Adelaide's need is strong enough for Harry Armstrong, but Port fans, let me know in the comments if you disagree with that. Fremantle is now on the board, and uh, again, I, it's tough to see who they would go for. A small forward like a Joe Berry would make sense. Same thing with Ollie Hannaford. Those would probably be the two names that come to mind for Fremantle selection. However, both are off the board. So I'm going to take a midfielder here in Cooper Hines a little bit earlier than expected. Um, I don't think clubs from outside Victoria are going to be taking Murphy Reed. That is my justification for him also still being available. And I don't think Fremantle really need any tall timber. They drafted a key back last year. Their key forward stocks are really strong, as are their ruck stocks. So a midfielder who can play in dual positions, you know, Cooper Hines being a Vic country boy. I think they'd probably prefer a Joe Berry, but in this scenario, they're unlucky. He's just gone the pick before. GWS have two picks in a row now, and I think they'll trade one of them. But I think they'll take their first one in Job Shanahan. So this will be interesting because there has been a suggestion that Essendon want to trade back in for Shanahan, um, but I think GWS will like him because they kind of need a key forward. And, you know, geographically, he's not that far from New South Wales. I think there's reasons to believe GWS would like him. And they wouldn't trade their first pick. They'll want to take Shanahan and maybe trade their second pick. So I like Shanahan here for the Giants. It probably breaks some Essendon hearts. However, with their second selection, I have GWS trading this pick out to Essendon for one of their future firsts. Of course, that's a, a pretty steep price to pay. But as I've said previously, I think if you're trading into the present in a strong draft, you have to cop a little bit of a price tax or whatever you want to call it on that. There is a premium to be paid for that. However, I think Essendon will be very happy to trade in and get pick 19, Harry Armstrong. He's not expected to go this late. This is a little bit of a... Uh, creativity on my part. I just don't see an argument strong enough for, well, any of West Coast, Port Adelaide, Fremantle, or GWS taking him. It's Richmond at pick 14. I don't think St Kilda that early is going to take him. So by that logic, he falls this far and Essendon snap him up as a partner long-term to Nate Caddy. I think they should be happy with that personally. Which leaves the Bulldogs at pick 20, who might be on the hunt for you know some midfielders, but in particular, some small quality forwards, I think could be on the agenda, considering there's a few around this range. However, they're all gone. Hannaford's gone, Joe Berry's gone, and Cooper Hines would be another consideration for them that I have now taken off the table. However, Murphy Reed's still there. I know it's rubbed people the wrong way that I keep putting Murphy Reed quite late, and I took uh, him for Port Adelaide in my last mock. But again, there has been some suggestion that he's not going to be taken by an interstate club. And when you've got five or so picks in a row from interstate clubs, although Essendon did trade in for Harry Armstrong, I think he's still available here. And I think he does suit a need and a very good talent, Murphy Reed, no doubt. Whether he becomes a midfielder or a high half forward at the next level remains to be seen. But either way, I think that ticks a box for the Bulldogs. So Richmond are on the clock now with pick 21. And I think this is where they start going tall. How tall do they go? Uh, well, they've taken two midfielders and two sort of midfielders in Houghton and Trevalia, who may or may not become midfielders, but it doesn't matter. I think they now start to look for talls and they have four selections left. Now with their first selection, I'm gonna take Luke Trainer here. Upon reflection, I think this is a good move for them. Again, I've talked a lot about how there's some innuendo with these concussions, but I, I don't know how serious that is. And on talent, this is a good pick for them. They do have Gibkiss as a young key back there. Um, of course, he hasn't really got on the park, but I do think Trainer is distinctly different as well, a little bit more offensively oriented. So I think forms a good long-term one-two punch down back with them. Not a true key back either, but I still think at pick 21, that's really good value for someone like Luke Trainer. So I'm happy with that selection. So Sydney's on the board here, and in most cases, I think I haven't had them taking a tall forward in Jack Whitlock until now, but this is the way the cookie has crumbled in this particular scenario. So again, I just make the case that without any clear deficiencies in terms of their list, it's a good opportunity to take a 200 centimeter key forward. As a player who is four, five, six years younger than guys like Amati and Logan McDonald, then if the talent is right, then I think this is a good move for Sydney, and they still have another selection here um, where they can take a smaller dynamic player and then also take a key back later through the academy in Joel Cochran. So Richmond are now back on the clock and maybe it's time to go a tall forward. And I think the best available one here is Jonty Fall. There are a few good other options here. There's like Thomas Sims and there's 
Kale Geron. I've seen two pronunciations of that, Geron and Geron. I'm running with Geron for a bit. But I think to balance out this, this haul, uh, Richmond probably go to tall forward here. There's certainly a need for at least one in this year's draft. And maybe they add to it again in future drafts. Um, next, I have GWS bidding on Sam Marshall. So uh, this is again, a couple picks later than I normally have it, but again, doesn't really matter that much. So Sam Marshall gets the Brisbane Lions at pick 24 and GWS are back on the clock, having drafted Job Shanahan and having banked an extra first rounder for next year's draft. I think this part of the draft is so even. There are so many different candidates. I think last time I had them reaching a little bit for James Barrett. Um, this time I'll go Noah Mraz. I think this kid is a high potential key defensive prospect, 198 centimeters. Who did do uh, either a foot or an ankle injury uh, earlier this year and ruled him out for the season. However, I think he presents as a really good prospect for them, adds a little bit of depth. Key back stocks are pretty good at the moment, um, but I do think there's a possibility that if Lee Lear doesn't get too many games next year, they might have to replace him. So this is just about balancing out their team, a forward and a back. And there is an absence of midfielders who I would ideally like to take here for GWS. I think take some tall talent and then worry about the midfield um, with another pick. But at the moment, there aren't really suitable ones in this range. Next with Sydney, we did just discuss them taking Jack Whitlock and they've got Joel Cochran later in this year's draft. So they go the smaller dynamic player in Jesse Totoli. And I don't think this is the first time I've taken Totoli for Sydney. I think a long-term sort of apprentice there for Tom Papley. And of course, Jacob Constanti just got moved to North Melbourne. So perhaps there is a bit of a need there in a team that has some good midfield depth and has already drafted for talls uh, forward and back and drafted a Ruckman last year. I just think best available, Jesse Totoli is a good pick for them. So this is another Richmond pick and they've got eight picks. So I think this is where they trade and I've got them trading with West Coast. Now, West Coast fans, you're not going to like this, but I think this would cost West Coast a future first from Hawthorne in next year's draft. So how do we value that? Well, Hawthorne's first pick this year was, was a pick 14, wasn't it? And you could probably assume they're at least going to play finals next year. With the compromised nature of next year's draft, that could become a late teens pick. And so what we're trading here is a late teens pick for pick 27 in this year's draft, which is considered stronger. So that's me making the case for why West Coast would do it. And I think West Coast have put them in the, themselves in the position of having to trade in live at potentially an expensive cost. This isn't necessarily me advocating for West Coast to do this. I just think it is distinctly possible. And I think West Coast is probably the sort of team who would pay a bit of a premium to take a selection here. And for Richmond, it just pushes another asset into the first round of next year, which I think is shrewd business at this point. Uh, West Coast is gonna take the local talent, Hamish Davis. So again, I think this talent pool is so even. And we have drafted a forward there in um, Ollie Hannaford with their first selection. However, I think Davis presents as a hard running outside midfielder at the next level, which is something West Coast desperately need. They need some run and carry on the outside. It plays to get from contest to contest. If you can rest forward and kick a few goals as well, that's ideal. But I think West Coast in an even pool will go local here, even if you could probably make the case to some better available talents. Richmond with their final selection in this year's draft will take Alex Dodson, the Ruckman. There is a bit of a need for a young Ruck here that potentially supplement that with a mature one. But I think the best Ruck in this year's draft is not a bad way to go. When you consider the amount of talent they took in their first four picks, they've just added Trainer, Fall and Dodson a key position in every part of the ground and they've traded a future pick into the first round of next year. So I think that is a good, well-rounded haul for Richmond. Next, we have the Western Bulldogs. And uh, again, we're looking for general forwards, general defenders, or the best available midfielder. I'm gonna go Angus Clark from South Australia, a hard running defender. Again, making the case for best available is hard in such an even talent pool. And I think we will see some surprises around this range of the draft. This is a little earlier than is forecasted for Angus Clark, but I do think he fills a need for the Western Bulldogs here. He's also about eight centimeters taller than Harry Oliver, who was the other player I considered here. Harry Oliver would have also been a good selection. They just traded out a small defender in Caleb Daniel, um, but I think some way or another, they'll get a running defender and my preference for them is Angus Clark. And the final selection in this year's top 30, in my opinion, is West Coast. And uh, they've taken two selections so far. They'll go for a back half player here in Charlie Nichols. Now, this is seemingly a little bit early for them, but with Port Adelaide looming, I think, at the next pick, taking a South Australian key position player who can play forward and back. And there has been a link to West Coast uh, through their recruiting manager, Dwayne Massey. I think West Coast go tall with this selection. Now, uh, putting my Eagles cap on for a minute, if it was up to me, West Coast would have the flexibility to trade in again, say in the 30s or 40s, and look for someone like a Clancy Dennis from Western Australia. But for now, assuming this is West Coast's last pick in the draft, I think they need to go for a tall 
option and ideally Charlie Nichols presents as potentially a key back. Certainly not. Certainly a key forward is not needed for West Coast. I think that is the way that they would draft him. So there you have it guys. A little bit of an out there one. I, I deliberately try to throw some different names in there, particularly from 20 onward. And I definitely shuffled up the order in the first round. So again, bear in mind, this is a little bit creative, um, taking a few punts and bearing in mind as well, the draft, particularly this one, is it's gonna be hard to get the order right naturally. So I've thrown up a few different scenarios here. What happens if this player goes unexpectedly? And I did try my best to ground it in logic, but let me know in the comments what you think. And for now, I'll say goodbye and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.